Okay, so today's lesson is going to be a continue onwards uh, in our book that we've just received, of course. Uh, this is going to be about intro to stoichiometry. Um, this one's going to get more in detail with predicting what's going to happen following a chemical reaction, especially in terms of what gets produced. Anyway, without wasting time, here we go. Uh, so the main idea today is quantitative analysis. So basically, how can we predict how much of something will form following a chemical reaction? Now, I know we've done this before, but we absolutely need to ensure we're 100% with this before we move on. Uh, and then, of course, you'll have a fair bit of practice time uh, to work on this today. So anyway, here we go. Uh, so stoichiometry is not just a fancy word that chemists made up. Stoichiometry is the measurement and relationship of chemicals involved in chemical reactions. Um, you can read all this whole thing. You can do that on your own. Basically, again, all stoichiometry is all about is predicting how much of something will be produced following a chemical reaction. Uh, we've done quite a bit of this before. Really, it all involves having a balanced chemical equation to start with. And then you have to realize that the only thing that really matters is uh, your molar ratio. So again, your molar ratios, which come out of your coefficients in a balanced chemical equation, those are the only things that really matter, right? But again, it only works when dealing with moles. You can't do this with grams or anything like that. We'll deal with that another time, but uh, for today, we'll just focus in on moles. So the mole to mole process is first step one, balance your reaction. Step two, determine the given and the unknown in the question. And then step three, use coefficients for the mole ratio of the two substances. Uh, again, we've done a lot of this before. We'll start with a pretty quick and easy example. How many moles of oxygen gas are needed to react completely with 3.50 moles of hydrogen gas to produce water vapor? The very first thing you should always do, step one, get your balanced equation. So we're reacting oxygen gas with hydrogen gas to produce water vapor. So in other words, we can say O2 plus H2 is going to produce water vapor, which is H2O. Now that's what we call a skeleton equation because we haven't balanced this yet. First of all, I want you to notice we have two oxygens on the left side, but only one oxygen on the right side. So I think we might want to put a two in front of the H2O. So now we have two oxygens on both sides, but now we have four hydrogens on the right side with only two hydrogens on the, on the left side. So we'll need to put a two in front of this. So now we have four hydrogens on each side. So that's now our balanced equation. That's always the most important thing to start with. Step two, note your givens and your unknowns. Uh, you can do this in a variety of ways. You could like literally just say, okay, well, we know we have 3.50 moles of hydrogen gas. So you could say, okay, hydrogen gas, we got 3.50 moles. Personally though, although I won't do it for this question, but personally what I do is I take my givens and I put them directly underneath whatever they correspond with. So in the balance equation, I'd probably write right underneath this 3.50 moles. That just helps me visualize it a little bit better and helps me kind of keep track of where I'm going and what I've got. Uh, so step three, solve using your conversions and cancellations. So unknown and given to find the moles of the unknown. I, I hate how that's worded, but again, these, these, you know, printed notebooklets, we got them from a resource. You know, it was kind of like a last case, last worst case scenario sort of thing. Uh, but anyway, what I would reword step three, four is basically just say, hey, look, you have this many moles of H, uh, H2. Notice you have two parts of H2. So 3.50 moles is equal to what we would call two parts. And since that's two parts and we're looking for how many moles of oxygen gas are needed, you can see that we only have one part of oxygen gas. So if this is two parts, we just need to divide this by two to figure out what one part is in terms of moles. Now, again, this strategy only works with moles. If I had given you grams, you would have had to use molar mass to find the number of moles. We'll do that another day. Uh, but because we're just dealing with moles here, we're good to go. So 3.50 moles divided by two, that's going to give us 1.75 moles, uh, and that'll be for our oxygen gas. So again, we were able to determine this just by looking at our coefficients and our balanced equations. Since we knew how many moles of H2 gas we had, and that there was two parts of H2 coming from that balanced equation, we could just kind of deduce that since there's only one part of oxygen, we're going to have to have half as much moles of oxygen as we did uh, of H2. All right, moving on. Uh, example two, how many moles of ammonia gas can be produced by reacting this many moles of hydrogen gas with sufficient uh, nitrogen gas? So in other words, we don't care about how much nitrogen gas we have. We're just reacting this much of hydrogen. It doesn't tell you how much nitrogen. We don't care. We're looking for how many moles of ammonia are produced. If you'd like, you can pause the video right here and give this one a shot on your own. 
but regardless of that, I'll go over this on my own. So first things first, let's, uh, let's come up with a balanced chemical equation. We're mixing nitrogen and hydrogen to produce ammonia. So how about we say nitrogen gas, which we know is N2, uh, and we're reacting that with hydrogen gas, which is H2. And this is going to become ammonia gas. Ammonia is NH3, not to be confused with NH4, which is ammonium. Ammonium is a type of ion. Uh, so there's our equation right there. One thing I noticed right off the bat is we have two nitrogens on the left and we only have one nitrogen on the right. So maybe I want to put a two in front of this. Now we have six hydrogens. We only have two hydrogens here. So I'll put a three in front of this. Now I think we're good to go. We're now balanced. Uh, so next thing up, after we come up with our balanced chemical equation, we want to note our givens. So in this case, we know we have six moles of hydrogen gas. So just underneath uh, the hydrogen gas in the equation, I'm going to put 6.00 moles. And I want you just to notice that that's going to be the equivalent of three parts because of our balanced chemical equation. So six moles is equal to three parts. Now, what we're looking for here, though, is how many moles of ammonia gas. Now, ammonia gas has two parts. So maybe what we want to do is we want to find out what one part is by dividing this by three. That's going to give us 2.00 moles is one part. And then, of course, just because we know we have two parts of ammonia gas, we just need to times this by two. That's an X times by two. And this is going to give us 4.00 moles is how many moles of NH3, or in other words, ammonia, that are going to be produced. Uh, so if we only had six moles of hydrogen gas and we had as much nitrogen gas as we need, uh, you'd end up finding that you're only producing 4.00 moles of ammonia gas. All right. Anyway, hopefully, hopefully that makes some sense. We're going to try another example here. Iron is the most widely used metal in North America. Wow. Fun fact, right? Anyway, it may be produced by the reaction of iron three oxide from iron ore with carbon monoxide to produce iron metal and carbon dioxide. How many moles of uh, are, ugh, how many moles of iron three oxide is required to produce 2.25 moles of iron? Okay, first things first. Uh, if you want to try this on your own, pause here. But hey, I'm not waiting for nobody, so I'm going to get started here. First things first, get a balanced chemical equation. Iron three oxide, that's a three positive charge. Oxygen has a two negative charge. Swap and drop. This is going to be Fe2O3. That's your iron three oxide. It's reacting with carbon monoxide, that's CO. And that's going to be producing iron, where did it say? Iron metal and carbon dioxide. Well, iron metal is just Fe. Carbon dioxide is CO2. Now we've got to balance this. This one might be a little bit weird to balance. Let me kind of just look at this real swift. Uh, you might be tempted to say, okay, well, you got three oxygens here, you got two. Maybe you might want to put a two in front of this, but then we're kind of like running into a, a bit of a trouble here. Um, there's no way for us to turn a two into a three or a thing there. Yeah, here's the thing. I'm just balancing. I haven't even like done an answer key for this. Yeah, I'm not even lying. Here's the thing. If we put a two in front of this, I'll just show you what I mean. If we put a two in front of this and a two in front of this, we now have four oxygen, but now suddenly we have five oxygen over here. Uh, I really, really, really don't want to put anything in front of this if I don't have to, because otherwise this is going to have to go with it. Uh, so the next thing I might try is since an even number didn't work, what if I put three in front of this? That's going to bump me all the way up to six oxygens. But of course, since we have six oxygens and three carbon, we're going to need to put a three in front of here. So we have three carbon over here again. And now we have uh, three times one is three oxygen plus another three oxygen. We now have six oxygen on both sides. So here's the good news. I've now balanced this in terms of oxygen. The last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to balance my iron. The nice thing is I can just put a two in front of this iron right here. Boom, we were able to figure that one out. That was a bit of a tougher one. Sometimes it's a bit of a guessing game. Again, there's not really a way of teaching how to balance an equation. It just becomes a puzzle. You have to uh, figure it out on your own. Um, but hopefully you were able to see a little bit of my thought process there. Maybe you weren't able to see my thought process. On a question like this, you just have to kind of try it. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes it is quite, uh, quite the struggle. Anyway, I'm not going to ramble too much more. We're looking for how many moles of iron three oxide. So we're looking for the number of moles of this guy on the far left. Uh, will be required to produce 2.25 moles of iron. So we know we have 2.25 moles of this guy right here. And that's going to be the equivalent of quote unquote two parts. Now you'll notice in the equation here, we only have one part of iron three oxide. So in order to find how many moles of iron three oxide, we just have to take our two parts and divide it by two. 
this one's going to be a, another little bit of a sneaky question here, though, because if you look at the question itself, there's only three sig digs allowed. If you were to divide this by two, you're going to get 1.125 moles, but that's four sig digs. So we actually have to round this. The number of moles we're going to have is going to have to round to three sig digs, so it's 1.13 moles. There we are. So basically, bottom line here, guys, just figure out your balanced chemical equation. That's often the hardest part of all this. Identify what uh, what moles you have with whatever piece there is, uh, and then associate that amount. So in this case, 2.25 mo uh, moles with however many parts you have. That's the coefficient. So in this case, it was two parts. Uh, and then just look at how many parts of the thing you want there are. So in this case, there was one part. Uh, so you just have to divide this by two and boom, bingo, bango, bongo, you're already there, right? No big deal. Uh, if you were looking instead for how much carbon monoxide you need, you'd have to divide it by two to find one part and then times it by three to find three parts, right? It's not really a big deal. We've done this before. Um, but again, if you're stuck on any of this, please just reach out to me and I'll help you. Even if it's a question in the booklet or whatever, just, just let me know. Uh, okay, we got one more example here. If you decompose 0 0.27 moles of malachite, that's what this guy is right here. Remember that from our malachite lab that we did back in October or whenever it was. Uh, how many moles of copper two oxide would be formed? Copper two oxide is this guy right here. Uh, so we know we have this many moles, 0 0.27 moles of this guy. And it's asking how many moles of copper two oxide would be formed? This question seems so easy that I'm actually like surprised you're even asking it. Uh, if you look at this real quick, uh, you have to make sure you balance this chemical equation because they didn't put any coefficients here. Uh, since they didn't put any coefficients, uh, I have to really just take it upon myself to make sure we, we've got everything, you know, in a row here. Uh, and unfortunately, we don't. Look, we have a copper here and a copper here. So there's two coppers on the left side, but there's only one copper here. Uh, here's, again, following my thought process. I could be mistaken, but we, we'll just start. I'll put a two in front of here now. Uh, so that's going to tell me I got two coppers on both sides. So coppers are now good. If we look at our uh, hydrogen next, let's say, we've got two hydrogen here and two hydrogen here. So, so far, hydrogen's good as well. The other thing I could look at is carbon. We've got one carbon here and one carbon here. So carbon's good now too. Oh, if we're lucky, we might actually have this all balanced. Uh, we got two oxygens plus another two oxygens. So four, five oxygens. I'm going to write it up here just to hold on to that. we got five oxygens. How many oxygens we got here? we got three and then two. Woo, look at that. Oh, that worked out really nice. Five oxygens on both sides. Again, what I was just doing there was I was showing you my thought process. Again, we really had to check here. It turned out it wasn't a balanced equation. If it was already a balanced equation, I would have been laughing myself silly because we would have known how many moles we had of malachite and that would have been the same as the number of moles uh, of copper two oxide. But it really isn't too much harder than that here. Once we have it balanced, notice there's two parts of copper two oxide, but only one part of malachite. So to turn this into the number of moles, of uh, copper two oxide, we just have to times that by two. So 0 0.27 times two is 0 0.54. Uh, and that is to two sig digs as we needed. So 0 0.54 moles is our answer. Okay. Uh, all right, that's it. Wow, see, we're all done. So for practice, I want you to work on the questions on page six and seven. Hopefully it won't uh, you know, take you too long, but the answers are provided at the back of our note package. They weren't for that last section that we did last day, uh, but they are going forward from here on. So make sure you use them, check your work. Uh, and as always, uh, ask me if you have any questions, right? So I'm, I'm here to help. Anyway, best of luck.